we are going to talk about containers. First, I will begin by introducing containers. Why are they important for you as a Hyper-V administrator or architect? Next, I'll talk about containers on Windows servers. You'll see there are two types of containers on Windows servers. And finally, I will go through a brief introduction on how to deploy containers on Windows servers and Hyper-V. So let's begin by introducing containers. First, I will introduce what containers are about. What are the benefits of containers? Why are they becoming so popular and all the rage, especially with developers? And I will want to go through some terminology that you're familiar with the terminology. So as a Windows and a Hyper-V administrator, you understand the terms when a developer who is using containers comes and speaks to you. First, what are containers? In case you're wondering why am I introducing containers in a Hyper-V course, there are some similarities between containers and virtualization. Recall that Hyper-V is a hypervisor that abstracts hardware and virtualizes it. So really, Hyper-V is about hardware virtualization. Well, containers are similar in that they are about operating system virtualization. So some components of the operating system become virtualized, but as you'll see, some components are shared between containers. This is probably the best description to help you understand what containers are about. You have the host operating system on which there's a kernel on top of it. That kernel has an user mode. In user mode, you have binaries and libraries. And in there, you have the container applications. The container applications and the binaries are bundled together in user mode that is dependent on the kernel. So what does that mean? It means the containers have to be the same version of the host operating system since the different container applications will share the same host OS kernel. So how is that different from virtual machines? So in a virtual machine, you have server infrastructure, just like you would with containers, on top of which there's a host operating system, just like containers. But then you have a hypervisor, in our case Hyper-V, that goes on top of the operating system, in Hyper-V, you deploy guest OS VMs or guest VMs. Each one has an operating system that may or may not be the same as the host operating system. We've seen, for instance, Linux and Windows 10 VMs that are on Windows Server 2010 host OS. And in these guest OS VMs, you have your binaries, libraries, and applications. So you see some similarities with the containers, which is OS virtualization again. But instead of a hypervisor, you have a container engine, which is a piece of software. In our case, this would be Docker. And in that container engine, that's when you have your shared libraries that are shared between different applications and could have multiple containers with additional applications. So let's have a look at some container terminology. First is Docker. Docker is a name of a company that produces the Docker engine that is being used in Windows Server to manage containers. Some additional terms, Orchestrator is a piece of software that goes on top of the container engine, and its job is the whole management and operation, orchestration, scheduling, scaling, failover, clustering, networking. It does a lot of things for those containers. Container image, just like an operating system image that you're familiar with, container image is an image or a grouping of applications, files, and any customization layers. A container registry is simply a repository of container images. So when you are deploying a container in your Windows Server environment, you can pull that image from a repository. Some of the familiar ones is the Docker Hub and in Windows Server 2019, there's a new one. We'll see that a little bit later. Finally, a sandbox. Any writable action of a container is saved in a sandbox. What happens with the container is because that kernel is being shared by all containers, that kernel is read-only. Anything that requires any write operations, that's where it's being saved in a sandbox. So what are the benefits of containers? Why have they become all the rage, especially with developers? Really, containers were built to try and solve a few problems. One of the main ones is what happens when a developer develops code on their laptop or desktop and then wants to promote that into a dev environment, into a production environment afterwards. Well, those environments are not the same. So what ends up happening is that code that the developer wrote will not work in the development environment or test environment or production environment. So one of the ways to solve that is by creating a container 
is self-contained, it has an application layer, it has a dependencies, as long as you're deploying it on a known host OS, which is managed by the Docker engine as well, then you are more certain that that code will run into that target environment. So that's a big problem that developers try and solve by using containers. The other thing is containers push for smaller, lightweight applications. As you make them in the images, the images are very lightweight. That's one of the use cases for Nano Server and Windows Server Core as well. Because the applications are very lightweight, smaller images, they're very suitable for microservices architecture. Again, something that developers really, really like about containers. So that's it for now. I just wanted to introduce what containers are about. So just keep in mind, this is OS virtualization. What you can do with containers is lightweight applications or lightweight services that become bigger applications and are managed independently that way. Developers love them as Windows Server administrators begin to like them because they save you a lot of headaches when developers promote code from one environment to another.